Greek mythology. Mm. Just thinking about Greek mythology gives me a headache. I could go on and on forever, and we wouldn't even cover how complex Greek mythology is. The Greeks were just whack. This is history told by the Greeks. Like how the world started and all this stuff. This is explained by the Greeks. So there was nothing in the beginning, okay? And then boom, now we have this thing and it's called chaos. It's just, just this big blobby thing of just consciousness, I guess. But chaos got bored of nothing, so he made Gia the earth. No, like the literal earth. But Gia got bored and begged chaos to make some other beings. So he made Uranus the sky, Pontus the seas, and Tartarus, the pit of evil. Well, Chaos kind of didn't care anymore, so he just went away. G and Uranus hooked up and had 12 kids, 6 boys and 6 girls, called the Titans. Don't ask me how they hooked up, I'm not going to explain it, because I don't know. Uranus didn't like his kids. So they hooked up again and had these guys called the Elder Cyclopses. These big, ugly guys with one eye. Uranus didn't like those guys at all, so he threw them in Tartarus. They hooked up one more time and had three even uglier kids. The hundred handed ones. These guys had, you guessed it, 100 hands. They also had 50 heads. Uranus didn't like those guys either and put them in Tartarus with their brothers. Well, Geo was kind of getting sick of Uranus putting her children into Tartarus, so she asked her Titan kid if any of them would help her get rid of Uranus. Her son Chrono stepped forward and volunteered to kill his father. So Gia set up the date, literally, and Uranus came. While he was getting all cozied up, Cronus and some of his brothers sprang upon Uranus and held him down while Cronus chopped his father into pieces with a scythe and threw him into the ocean. A scythe is the farming tool you use that has like a point and you see it like with death and what not. Before Uranus was fully killed, he gave Cronus a curse. Your children will kill you the same way you have killed me. Now these guys are immortal, which means they don't die. But they can stay in a certain state, like badly damaged or crippled forever. They don't die, but they don't always heal. So Uranus remains scattered in the ocean. After that was all said and done, they kind of settled down for a bit. Gia went and took like a bajillion year nap and basically told the Titans to behave. They called this the Golden Age. So Cronus' brothers and sisters married each other while Cronus married his sister Rhea. Okay, I know gag, but it was different back then, okay? Let's just accept it and move on. So Rhea and Cronus had a kid. Her name was Hestia, but she wasn't a Titan, she was a goddess, which was more powerful than a Titan. Cronus remembered the curse Uranus gave him and immediately feared the child. Rhea loved her though, as she was the Titan of mothers, but Cronus saw Hestia as a threat, so he unhitched his jaw and swallowed Hestia whole. Ouch. Rhea cursed Cronus with all her soul and went to sulk in the mountains, but Rhea thought of something. Hestia was immortal, so she wasn't dead, just inside Cronus's stomach. No big deal, she could just wait for someone to come along to help her get her daughter. But why didn't Rhea just slice Cronus to bits and get Hestia? Well, like I said before, they can't die, but they can have permanent wounds. Rhea didn't see that as a fair risk. So they had another goddess named Demeter, but Cronus just repeated as before, Gulp. A goddess named Hera? Gulp. Hades? Poseidon? Gulp. By the way, you might recognize some of these names. Don't worry, I'll explain why they are important later. Anyway, Rhea was kind of getting sick of having her kids be in, so she went and wept when she found out she was pregnant again. But she was told by Gia, while Gia was taking her bajillion year nap, that she should go give birth in the mountains. And so Rhea took that advice. When the time came, she followed Gia's instructions and had birth to a healthy baby god. His name was Zeus. When Kronos asked to see him, Rhea decided to try to be kind. She handed Kronos a rock. By this gift, Kronos didn't even look at the child before he swallowed it whole. Rhea secretly smiled as she put on her act of crying over her child and she vowed that she would have no more kids with Kronos. He was fine with that, of course. His belly was getting quite full with all the kids in there. But as the years went, Rhea raised her son, Zeus, and told him of his siblings in his father's belly and how one day he would save them. Zeus grew up strong, handsome, and ready to save his siblings from his father's belly. You know, as you do. But the day came where Zeus decided he would go and save his brothers and sisters. So he went disguised as a servant and served his father a drink that upset his stomach. Cronus fell sick. And what do you do when you're sick? You throw up. Just be glad you don't throw up five children. When the gods came out, they grew to their normal size and ran away with Zeus. Then they plotted the murder of their father. And you already know how he dies. By a sky. The same weapon that was used to cut up Uranus. As was prophesied. Yay, he's dead! But instead of throwing Cronus into the ocean, they threw him into Tartarus. Thus, the golden age of the Titans ended and the Bronze Age of the Gods commenced. But they needed to separate the world because you always need a ruler, apparently. The universe was split into like 
three things. The skies, the ocean, and the underworld. Why was the planet split into these categories? Remember Dia, Uranus, Tartarus, and Pontus? Neither do I. Quick reminder, Dia is the Earth, Uranus is the sky, Tartarus is the pit of evil, and Pontus is the oceans. The gods considered the Earth to be free game, so they divided the others between the brothers, Hades, Poseidon, and Zeus. Because Zeus saved everyone, he got first pick. He chose the skies. Poseidon chose the ocean, and Hades was left with the underworld, a place right below the Earth and above Tartarus, the afterlife. He didn't mind, though. He was dark and brooding anyway. Now that we've covered the beginning, as told by Greek myths, let's talk about the gods. There are 12 Olympian thrones, one for each of the boys, Zeus, Poseidon, Ares, Apollo, Hermes, Hephaestus, and Odysseus. And one for each of the girls, Hera, Demeter, Athena, Artemis, and Aphrodite. Seven boys and five girls. But where is Hestia and Hades, you ask? Well, when Odysseus came around, Hestia stepped down to not cause any drama, because there wasn't enough of that in Greek mythology, and all the gods unanimously excluded Hades, because they didn't like him for some reason. He was talking about it anyway. That was a bad decision if you ask me, but you're not asking me. There may be 12 thrones, but there are so many minor gods that if I were to talk about all of them, your mind would explode. So I just drew the important ones. And so for this project, not only did I make this video, but I also drew all of the gods that I just named. But you know what? Screw Zeus. Wait, no, that's literally the cause of every Greek myth. You may have saved everyone, but we're gonna go oldest to youngest, starting with Hestia.